So next, I want to, uh, so we're going to give each other feedback, right? So this is our first draft. Thanks for working on your first draft. So we want to um, give everybody feedback. And again, um, what our comments here aren't, aren't uh, you know, attacking anybody or being jerky or whatever. The more detailed and specific feedback, the better, right? That helps everybody um, uh, make, take, their, uh, take your impressions and better revise what they have generated. Um, okay, so, um, uh, so this is our uh, plastic team's um, poster. So cool. So uh, want to um, have uh, sort of two broad areas of feedback. So one is on the, the technical aspects of the figures and, and you know, that kind of thing. The other is in the overall arguments, in the overall, um, uh, are you building a strong case? Are, are you, are you, you know, what, what, what's the takeaway? And are you making a convincing case that that takeaway is the situation? So one is the logistics and one is the argumentation. Cool? All right. So um, actually, why don't, we, why don't we take a minute? Maybe I can not display it like this. Maybe I can display it like. OK, good. So here's a trick that I um, suggest you guys use. It doesn't matter if it's plotly or anything. I suggest, you know, so when you're working on making your figure in your, in your program, you know, generate your figure, revise it, revise it. Oh, no, no, let's have it like this. Let's have it like that. Revise, 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 right? And get it the way you like, like it. And then when you export it, I, when I'm doing a poster, I never export or almost never export my figures with text. I'll export it naked. So it would be the symbols, so it would be the lines, the, the colors, you know, all that kind of stuff. But there wouldn't be anything. And then what I do is I go in, and you don't have to do this, but, but this is a way to make it look more professional. Then what I would do is I would go right here where the 0, 0.00 is on the axis and insert a text box. And I would type in 0, 0.00. And I would match it to the font size and, and you know, font type of my poster. Now... And it's, it's, it's the same thing with ArcGIS, right? I do the same thing with ArcGIS. So, you know, I go through and make the map professionally and, and make it so that when I export it, it looks all good and everything. But then when it comes time to using in a presentation, some presentations are using Arial. Some presentations are using this. Some are a slideshow. Some are a this or that. And I just find it a lot easier to have a clean version of these graphics that I could then insert and then as I'm revising my slideshow or my poster or whatever, I can just go in and I can directly modify the text in, that, in the program itself. And so you don't have to do that, but that's a way to be, um, have everything aligned and, and be professional and look crisp and, and, and solid and everything like that. The other issue is, uh, as Cass was mentioning, like when we export stuff, we have to be we have to be careful about resolution, right? So we always want to, for a, a visual display like this, either a a slideshow is a is a oral presentation or a poster that's going to be printed. We want to make sure the resolution is as high as possible, as high as possible. But even so, sometimes you can get a little bit of, of you know fuzziness, a little bit of pixelation, depending on what's going on. By inserting the text in the native uh, uh, functioning of the poster in, in PowerPoint itself, it's always going to be super crisp, right? It's going to render it as a vector object. So when it comes time to print or whatever it's going to always look crisp and nice and hard lines. So that's one suggestion for, for how to take care of Cass's comment. Good. Other thoughts or other, other suggestions? Carson. Yeah, so, um, if the data you're plotting is like a continuous change from less than $30,000 to more than $30,000, uh -huh. uh -huh. the colors you use are individually classified rather than being on a gradient? Okay, good. So, so the idea of, of like, you know, we're going from quantity one to quantity two to quantity three, quantity four, quantity five. And so, uh, so the color ramp maybe doesn't make sense. Um, so, you know, with the, with the first draft, it's fine. But now that we're starting to, now we're getting ready to revise, let's make stuff look as coherent as possible. And so, so that's, so Carson's comment is one useful thing. The reason maybe we would have different colors is if maybe there is something about 90,000 to 120,000 let's say, or greater than 150,000 that we wanted to 
um, reference in other figures, right? Or reference in the text, in which case maybe we'll make the text uh, orange, you know, where we say $150,000 or something like that, right? So we could, this could be a useful technique if we want to draw attention to these unique categories and they're very easy to see. But if you're not going to do that, then his comment about what, how come, you know, why do we have these different colors uh, plays into it. Similarly, why do you need different colors at all? Right, I mean, so, the, so again, you can use the colors as a tool to help people in other elements of your presentation follow along that you're referring to category A or category B. So the colors are helpful there. Or on a map show where, where category A was or something of that nature. So that's helpful. Um, but, if you, but short of that, we don't necessarily need colors, right? And so, um, what we should start doing now with our figures, now that we have draft figures, is, is look at this and say, hey, do I need X? Do I need color? Maybe I do. But then try a version without color and see, hey, does it work as well? Does it communicate the information as, as succinctly? And if it does, I would go with the less complicated version. Maybe it's not, maybe it, maybe it just works better with the colors for whatever reason, maybe. Um, uh, but, but now we're at the stage of, do I absolutely need that? Do I need an axis? Do I not need an axis? Do I need a label? Do I not need a label? Do I need the units? Do I not need, you know, all that kind of stuff sort of go through and, and do I need to label the, the statistic? Yes, is the answer. Yes, I better, better label the statistic. Okay, good. Good, other comments, other, other thoughts, other first thoughts about this figure. Okay, I would say that, um, uh, also, as we're starting to revise, let's think about space. So now one of the aspects of a poster is that we have limited real estate. That isn't always the case in, say, an essay we write or, or even, for that matter, necessarily in a slide presentation. Maybe we just have another slide or two or three more slides to communicate the info. But a poster, we only have this limited real estate. It's all the... 100% of the area we have to work with. So therefore, that real estate is limited. So um, by the nature of the beast, the amount of area that we're devoting to whatever the thing is, is some measure of its importance, right? So, so we have this huge chunk of space here, right? Dedicated to this figure, this huge chunk dedicated to this figure, this huge chunk de dedicated to this figure, yeah? So um, uh, we're saying that we're signaling that we think these things are, are as important or more important than the text. You know, so, you know, unconsciously that's what, that's what we're we're implying with this layout. But then also have a look. So we have a bunch of negative space right here. So between the left blue bar and the axis, there's there's just blankness, and over here there's just blankness. Um, and then we have and then we have the label, and then we have the labels over here. Um, we could do this all way tighter. We could do this way tighter. So one, we could put the, the quantities on the axis itself, or we could just put the quantities like, you know, in the bar, like in the area of the bars. So we can insert a text box with the color of the background, in this case it's white, um, with, you know, make, uh, white letters and it looks like the letters would be cut out of there. So we could actually put, you know, 30,000 right here in the middle of the blue bar, you know, horizontally, for example. And so, so there's different ways to do that. But it, it, it looks like we have all this space and we've, we've, we have net white space to the left, white space to the right, and then we have all the bars kind of crunched in the middle, which looks a little bit funky, right? So it looks a little bit strange. Okay, next I would say, um, uh, we need to explain what this axis is, right? So in the text, you guys talk about it, but again, one of our philosophies we should be always ascribing to is when we write a paper with a data figure, the, it, the, I should be able to read the text and take away the, 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 key, the key insights just by reading the text, period, new sentence. 
I should be able to look at the figure or figures and take away the key, the most important takeaway or the main takeaway with just looking at the figure. When we have both of them together, they should reinforce and make it even stronger. And there might be other subtleties we'd get. But as far as the main points, I should be able to get the main points from just staring at the figure. And I should be able to get the main points from just reading the text. This doesn't meet that test because I don't know what the, what's the zero, what's the zero, minus 2.5, minus 5, right? This is obviously the plastic use, but we need to label that. We need to label that axis that way. Um, uh, okay, cool. Uh, and then, okay, then another one is um, units. So what is this bar? Well, what does the bar represent? Uh, right, but what statistic is being shown by the bar? It's probably average, right? But we don't know if it's average or median or me, you know, or, or, or mode or what. So, so we need to tell the audience that this is average, not in the axis. That's not correct. But, but somewhere you could insert a little text box or somewhere in the title or something below the title or something. This is the mean. And then what are the error bars? The error bar standard error? Seafood people? Or standard deviation or what is it? Yeah, what are they? That's a great question. Um, so, plot well, like said down me, so this was just Excel, and it just said error bars on different plots. Right, so this is why you guys can't use Excel, because Excel sucks. I mean, it's great, again, Excel is great for managing data and, and organizing data. There's a reason I tell you guys not to use Excel, right? It, it's because I've been doing this for decades and decades and decades. Um, don't know what this is, and this looks probably wrong, right? And so Excel will do some weird random Excel stuff and tell you it gives, gives you an error bar. Don't know what it means. So, so we want to, that's why it's always best to calculate the error yourself and then insert that as a data column and then use that as the, as the thing that will be done. So then you control it. You decide what that is. Is that coefficient of uh, variation? Is that confidence interval? Is that, you know, what is that? And so we need somewhere in here to say that the bars are mean plus or minus one standard error or something of that nature. Cool? Okay. Good. Other thoughts on this guy? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Uh, how about this one? This is average change in plastic usage by educational uh, attainment. So you guys give them feedback on this bad boy. Okay, so it might be better as a bar graph. Okay, good. Right, and so again, now, so now we're starting to get into the, the, the issue of uh, consistency, right? So, so in general, we should always be consistent. So our fonts should be the same font, the same size, you know, all that kind of stuff. So obviously that, that's one you guys need to sort of, um, now that everybody has their drafts, you need to decide, okay, who's, who's got the master or, or what are we gonna make our, our font size or this or that? Again, this is where if you just, exported the naked figure and added the text as text box, it's very easy to, to make everybody's be the same font or the same size or whatever. But, but yes, yeah, so we can be, be consistent. What else? You guys think it's great? You guys think it's awesome? Ooh, okay, so, so, so I would say since you guys are showing this guy with a, a range, I would probably be consistent. So when people look from figure one to figure two, it's easier for a naive vi viewer to kind of jump between. You could truncate the range, that's not technically wrong, but it would, it's easier for people to make visual comparisons if, they, if it's a, a consistent um, size and a consistent, um, so one, I would do that, if there's space, I would have the range of the y-axis be the same as well as the actual size on the figure. So then it's just much more intuitive for people to look from thing to thing, right? 
Again, this is not the examples that we looked at from the Wall Street Journal opinion thing of people trying to, you know, use data to lie and sort of, you know, slant the opinion. We're trying to be objective here. And so, so by laying it out consistently from, from presentation one to presentation two, that is saying, you know, I'm not trying to hoodwink you or whatever. This is, this is what the data, this is what the data are. Okay. Um, what else? Yes. Right. Uh, and so again, um, so you never call this, the, you never put the statistic in the axis label, right? So the axis label is what is the variable that we're talking about? And then in parentheses, usually we'd put the units, right? So um, uh, plastic units, this is relative change, uh, relative annual change or something, something to that effect, right? We asked, we asked people how, how their plastic usage has changed relative to the previous year. So, you know, so, so the units are, 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 are proportional change. Uh, but, but you would never put average in here. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. So the label in here, then you, 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 in, the, in the figure legend or somewhere in the text, then you can tell me that it's the average. But, but this is, yeah, it's just, it's just completely wrong, right? right? So it's how we're representing the data is, is as an average. And so we also need, so this is the measure of the central tendency. We also need a measure of the spread of the data, remember. So some, some amount of error, some, some confidence intervals, some standard error, some something like that. Okay. Uh, cool. Can I just ask a Please. For this one? Yeah, so I, I would say plastic usage, and I would say the units are, uh, are uh, annual change, yeah, or proportional change, yeah. Or, or you could say change in plastic usage, and the units would be proportional. Well, so, 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 so that's the, what I described was the minimum. You might want to also add some additional stuff. So if we look at this poster over here on the wall, for example, we have, we have the units and stuff, but then we also have things like arrow that sort of says more or less or something like that. So I, you, I would also, because this is a bit weird, right? This isn't the most natural thing in the world to see a, a figure that starts at zero and goes down. Right, so I would I would also maybe consider adding an arrow that says um, you know decrease plastic or or less or something like that. Right, that would be I I mean that seems to resonate with people. People seem to like that when we've done that in the past. Right, so um, yeah, good. Okay, cool. Uh, so these are, I mean, so, so this is, this is not quite, so the, the figure on the left, which was 30,000, 60,000, like that, that actually has actual numbers, right? And, we, and it's falling out on some, on some continuous variable. This is, this, we know that the high school is more than the some high school and that the some college is more than that and et cetera, but, but it's not as, um, it's not as uh, consistent, right? It's it's not as it's not as continuous as the one, uh, the figure on the left. So I think that's fine. I mean, I think I, I think that's that's okay. Um, it, it's it's basically category one, category two, category three. But we know that category two is bigger than category one. Right. So 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 it's it's. So looking is, is not an inconsequential consideration, but really it's about what's the best way to display the data for the appropriateness of the data. And so, and so it's, the, it's not wrong to do it as a, as a um, point on a thing here, but, but I'd say bar, bars are more traditional. Um, but it's not as if, if this is 
technically wrong, but it's not as, as consistent with how the data was sort of collected, laid out. So I would try it as a bar graph and see if it looks better. Um, and, I might, and I might say highest educational attainment. Okay. Okay, how about this one? Zoom tech. The, what was it? What did you guys say? I said, I smell Excel. You smell Excel, yes. There you go. Right. Yeah, yep, yeah, so it's definitely distorted. There's some distortion there going on here, um, so agreed. So again, I would say w the, the guidance that we had for the other ones apply to this one. So if we were going zero to minus one or something, right, then I would, I would have the range be the same. Cass? Um, our age group, zero to 18, doesn't really make sense with our data itself because we just should have at least Right, and, and there was like two or three people that, yeah, yeah, I agree. So, so yeah, so we should probably jettison the, the 18 one, even if there was a couple erroneously collected uh, samples in there. But, you know, e even if we even want to keep it in, it's only an N of three or something like that, right? So it's, it's, not, it's not super robust. So, yeah, so good. So first, we would, let's jettison the, the sub-18-year-olds. Um, and then, so why did you guys pick these particular age classes? Uh, they're just easier to com uh, uh, compose together. Okay. But, it, but uh, so what if, what if you did, um, you know, something like, uh, what if you did decades, like uh, 18 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 40, you know, something like that? Or, or you could do you could do 18, 19 year olds maybe, and then you could do 20 to you know that kind of thing. Yeah, because I could add the 18 too. Yeah. So let's let's see let's see how that looks. That that let's see if that looks um, cleaner. Um, but regardless, it, it just kind of throws people a little bit that like why is it 19, but then this one's 36 and this one's 51. So so um, so I totally get the idea of maybe having fewer bars or or, or fewer groupings, which is fine but maybe just not those specific ones. So let's try a couple alternative binning, uh, binning approaches. Um, uh, okay, good, okay, okay, so, so that, that's feedback on the figure. Uh, uh, sorry, other people have any feedback on the figures for these folks? Okay, cool. And then what, if, so, okay, so then let's, let's, let's look at the argument. So, so what, what's the argument, what, what's the takeaway you guys get from, um, from the income figure? Assuming everything's fixed and gets it all, you know, tight and everything, and the data is all correct. From this figure, what what are we getting a sense of? You guys, you guys tell the seafood people what you're getting from this figure. People who make more money uh, have used less plastic. Yes, yes. Or are reducing plastic more, right? Or, or reducing a greater proportion of. Plastic. Okay, so th that's what I see from there. How about this one? What do, what do, what's the main takeaway from this data presentation? Jason, what are you thinking? Um, like the more educated you are, the less plastic you use. You kind of see that with college. Yeah, there, 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 there's, it looks like there's a, there's a tendency that way. Until we see the error bars, it's hard to know if that's really real. But, but the trends seem to suggest that. The trends seem to suggest that as uh, that with more education, um, you might tend to have a higher reduction in your plastic usage. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. And then how about this guy? Again, since we don't have the error bars, it, we don't know for sure. But what, what's, the, what's the trend seem to be? Uh, with this guy.
Emily, what's, what, what's the trend you see in this bad boy? Yeah, it seems to be the, the uh, again, we don't know because we know the error bars, but it, it seems to suggest that <clears throat> older folks, but not the oldest folks, sort of an intermediary level of oldness, uh, seem to be demonstrating the greatest reduction in plastic. And that young folks, very young folks, relatively young folks, and relatively old folks um, are using a more similar amount of plastic from this year compared to last year. Cool? Okay. And then what about feedback about the overall argument for the poster that people made? Yeah. Yeah, good. I agree. So, so we're talking about the effect of income, the effect of education, the effect of age, right? And so, so let's, let's pull it all together, right? And so you might even want to make another figure maybe where you, so if, if you're saying, hey, um, high income people have the greatest reduction, maybe, right? I don't know if that's true, but maybe. And if, um, uh, uh, now, there's some, there's some correlation between some of these issues, right? So, so generally speaking, the people making the most money are probably not the 18-year-olds, right? You know, stuff like that. But, but still, we, it's, it, it seems to suggest that higher income, more education, intermediary age are going to see the greatest. Maybe, maybe you could do a figure of uh, young people without college degrees, earning less than $50,000, and then contrast that with people making a lot of money that have a graduate degree that are in their 50s, right? Maybe, maybe a, a two-bar two bar chart and see like, what are the, how do those two groups compare? And that could be sort of a nice, nice sort of concluding figure, right? So again, let's work on the art. So now, now we got the basics here. Yeah, we're gonna tweak our figures. Yeah, we all can fix stuff, but we have the basic idea. Let's make the figures tighter and let's work on making the argument nice and tight. And if I saw that, if I saw a final figure that, that or you could do it as a table or something, right, whatever, but if I see that, like, oh yeah, no, I do think that these, these demographic factors seem to predict how people are, are behaving with plastic. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Should we make the graphs all the same color, background-wise? Yes. So the question is, should I make, okay, so, so, so look at this one. I know it's still being revised, but look at this one and then look at this one back here in the wall, right? The backgrounds are all the same, right? Fonts are all the same, right? So this one I would argue looks more, looks more professional, but, but more than this looks more professional, I think this, one's, this one is easier to read, right? Because it has that consistent formatting. That's why, that's why we call it professionals because it's, it's, it's utilitarian. It's, it's, the message is easy to take away. So yes, I think yes. Other, so uh, people that made the poster, you guys have other questions for us? So what do you guys think? We're not going to print them. I think I think it looks better to have the background of the poster be the background of the of the uh, graphing frame. Uh, but that's not that's not a requirement, quote unquote. But I think it looks better. So for sections, we need to find out. Do we think our message section is okay? Or can work around? I think all of it needs work. <laughs> No, and, and that's not a critique of you guys. It's just, oh, it always does, right? But I mean, like, like the conclusion is a different size font from the method section, and it's a different, you know, style of font and everything. Um, so in general, um, 
I know when we when we do this justified, so so see how they how this <clears throat> excuse me text frame is uh, is aligned. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> that looks very nice when you just glance at it from afar. It looks very clean because the left edge of the text box, say in the methods section here, they all the letters all line up, and then on the right edge they all line up. But, but generally, I don't suggest you guys use that justification because it'll tend to spread things out. And so that's what we see here. So, so if we look at this, right, it looks like there's maybe some extra spaces in here. And that's because the program is automatically, um, uh, uh, you know, spaced out the characters and the, and the words so that it will be aligned on the right and the left. And that generally is a bit harder to read. So I, I wouldn't use the center justification. I would use the regular left justification um, or left alignment uh, on the paragraphs. I think that look, tends to look better and it's easier to read. And then I would just go through and, and you know, it should be Los Angeles. And we actually do, I know you guys didn't do many surveys from Santa Barbara, but we also surveyed Santa Barbara. So it's Los Angeles, Ventura, and Santa Barbara. Um, but, uh, Yeah, and then another one is when you guys generate stuff from another program and then copy and paste, um, it uses generic quote marks. So these are not the quote marks for this font. These are the, the generic like HTML quote marks. So stuff like that. So, so I mean, there's little particular things, but then also, you know, you guys can tighten up your writing and your argument 